Hi, welcome. I'm Greg LeBlanc at the Haas School of Business, and I'm here today with uh, David Riley, who is Principal Scientist at Pandora, um, and also an Adjunct Professor at the Information School here at UC Berkeley. Welcome, David. Thank you, Greg. Okay, so, so David, um, you built your career on the idea that business can be improved through experimentation. Um, tell me how much of a radical transformation that has been for businesses in general. Uh, I think that businesses are running experiments now at a rate much higher than before, but it's still, um, it's still a relatively small number of companies that take experiments seriously. Um, uh, for many years, business and economics, actually even academic economics, is considered just an observational science rather than an experimental one, and that's really changed only in the last couple of decades. Right, but most of the experimentation, I think, has been focused on uh, within technology companies and primarily around kind of uh, the, the web interface. Um, how much is that, uh, how much of an impact has that had on uh, the agility of these companies and to what extent is it limited to those sorts of uh, experiments? So that is the most common kind of experiment that you'll see is uh, we want to try out a new user interface and so we have a million people uh, get this particular experience and a million people get that experience. Sometimes it's as simple as should the corporate logo be this shade of blue or that shade of blue. Um, other times it's uh, we want to try a new music recommendation strategy at Pandora so we're going to try to you know try out this strategy with one set of uh, listeners and that strategy with another set of listeners. Um, it, do, it is certainly easier to implement when it's engineers building software that uh, runs the experiments and the software interacts directly with customers. Um, it's much harder when there are, are physical systems involved and, um, and, and organizational structures involved. So, for example, I've argued at a couple of my employers that we needed to experiment with what price we charge the advertisers and that has been very difficult to get implemented because it requires buy-in from the head of the sales force who's worried about the unfairness of one salesperson having to sell at a high price and another salesperson selling at a low price. Or, you know, how do you actually get the experiment to work? Maybe we do it fairly, we randomize at the advertiser level, but how do we credibly have a salesperson face one price for one of their clients and another price for another of their clients? It would be very hard for them to keep straight and and the experiment probably wouldn't be clean. So there are a lot of things that are hard when they're not just software. To have an experimental culture throughout your organization requires um, quite a bit of transformation and incentives and processes and Yes. Else. Yeah, I think, you know, in most of the world, people are not used to running experiments. Um, we're used to sort of doing what we think is the best thing, you know, th theoretically arguing this is the strategy we ought to be charging, th this is the price we ought to be charging, this is the strategy that we ought to be following. and. When you run an experiment, one of the problems is that you're admitting that you don't know the right answer for sure already. And there's, the, I notice a big tendency, it's kind of an ego thing maybe, to, to assume that you already know the right answer. And, and at least admitting that you don't can be a, a, a problem. Uh, I think it requires humility in order to be able to, to want to use experiments. And some people sort of don't want to admit to their boss that they don't already know the right answer. But I don't know how you could have known the right answer if you never ran an experiment. We all know that uh, machine learning is playing an increasingly large role in um, product design and pretty much in everything. Um, and, and yet, um, we still need humans to design experiments and to think through sort of the consequences of those experiments. Um, to what extent will we be able to kind of um, automate the experimental design process? There's a little bit of that uh, already happening, but f for the most part I would say the machine learning models are computing correlations rather than causal effects mm -hmm. because there isn't uh, a clear experiment where you know that everything's being held equal uh, except for the thing that you're, that you're experimenting with. Um, for example, let's consider search advertising. So Google and Yahoo both have um, systems that, that figure out what is the ad at the top of the page going to be. Um, and machine learning models are used to aid in that ranking. There's, a, there's an auction, but there's also machine learning that, that figures out what is the probability of a given ad getting clicked. And because the company only gets paid when the ad gets clicked, we need to take the, the advertiser's bid and multiply it by the probability of a click in order to do the rankings properly. Um, 
And so the machine learning guys will sometimes look at existing data and say, hey, you know, we should really be changing the algorithm uh, that ranks things in the following way because then we'll make more profit. And I say, well, hang on a sec. Uh, have we tried both strategies to see how they work? Because you change the ranking strategy, advertisers are going to start changing their bids and the keywords that they, that they uh, uh, are advertising on. And so um, it's, I, I think of machine learning today as giving us valuable hypotheses that still need to be tested with experiments. Um, now you asked about automating the experiments. Um, there are people working pretty hard on, um, on automating the experiments that go into keeping the machine learning models honest. Um, and it's, it's a pretty nascent area. Uh, they've been relying on an older academic literature on what's called the multi-armed bandit problem, uh, where you imagine a, a, a slot machine that's got multiple arms and you pull different arms and see what payoffs you get, but because the payoffs are random, you have to experiment for a long time in order to conclude what's the best arm to pull. And so hopefully there'll be some improvements in uh, the, both the academic literature and the uh, industry uh, standards. Mm -hmm. David, thanks for coming in today. Mm -hmm.